Did figure out. Did, uh, what was he uh, something last month about being a town? I think he might have. Remember. I do remember him saying that, but I don't. Yeah. I don't remember him saying when. So I'll just I'll put excused and we'll let him correct that if it's not true. Right. There we go. Oh, color. Action. Hi, Sue. Hey. Hi, Sue. Oh, Hi, Sue. Wow. Hi. In the flesh. Wow. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it never gets what I just saw. Uh, oh. Santa Claus. Two, not one, two water skis. Yes, the other ones are. Oh, wow. I hear you. They're not <laughs> waiting. You can move the camera down a little bit. I've never Oh, my God. Here they go. They have what? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Water skis. It's right at the ceiling, right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those crazy ones that's out there old. That is not connected. <laughs> no, don't worry. That's the TV that's oh, not okay. the <laughs> Yeah, my technology is not there. I don't know. You managed to get everything up and running here. Yeah. That's just a few buttons. Then he had a code. Uh -huh. Look at that. We can. What? We need, oh. we need a code word. <laughs> How about mute? Street phone. Street phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kristen. Sorry. It would be two or two thirty two. Oh, so I think it's two. two. We can. I because well, it's not going to take us that long. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. Like, try to be there right at two. I just have to. I can't. Yeah, no, I know. No, you don't. I just don't want you to get there and like everything. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll be there. I'll think of a plan. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. No, it's. I love my dress. Oh wow! To it. Okay. Almost a yeah. oh. Take this one and I'll take yeah. yeah. the corner. I'm gonna start picking <laughs> people's brains. Yeah. All right. This so I, I lived. Let's. She didn't have. Okay. Let's see here. I just been playing for anyone. Come my house. I tell me. I feel bad. All right. Okay. So I think we'll call the meeting to order. Okay. So it is April 25th, 2024. It is 707 PM. This is a meeting of the Grand Island Conservation Advisory Board. Um, let's see. First up, uh, minutes. Did everybody see the minutes from, uh, sent by Liz? Thank you, Liz. I didn't see any problems with it no. at all. It looked good. Okay. It looked really good. Perfect. All right. So not even a punctuation. <laughs> and I have a motion to accept the minutes. Motion. Okay. Do okay. second. Oh. Diane. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. It's carried. Minutes accepted. We can send those on. All right. And so let's see, the first thing up on our agenda, we have um, uh, Peggy Cotton, member of the community, asked to come address us and uh, regarding the, the golf view. Uh, yeah, and, and part of that is the small issue, then there's a, the bigger issue is the, uh, the whole idea of conservation of some of these spaces. Okay. And so that's Perfect. So I got started in this because um, I spoke to the town board um, Two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, whatever it was, and um, I also sent out um, my comments that were going to be um, done that night to um, uh, folks I know in the Grand Island Nature Alliance, um, and uh, so and as a result of a conversation, then um, I was um, permitted, if you will, to to come here. So um, let me just give you a little bit of background, and, and there is both a um, an immediate issue and also a, a, a larger issue that I'm just 
wanted to share with the group. So um, about 12 or 14 years ago, about 14 years ago, um, the property at the corner of Whitehaven and um, East River was up for development. Um, and that time um, in the early stages of that planning, there was, I think it was the number was something like 414 apartments um, back behind us um, that they staked it out so that we would have had on our back line, we would have had a 160 foot long apartment building, 30 feet high, 30 feet from my backyard. Um, and so um, uh, that wasn't all. There was there was a, um, the density issue um, with that and the kind of housing that was being proposed um, the um, uh, along with the, the uh, other issues that might have been considered more um, uh, to do with the, the nature of the development. So um the uh a group of the folks on east river and a group of the folks in east riverside woods and then a lot of other folks um who just were interested in it as a as a um an issue before the town board um came together and we were able to um uh push the um the town board to pass um a local legislation that would um uh ask for a buffer, um, if you will, between um, uh, existing properties that were different codes or different zoning codes. So the area where I live is R1, um, the area behind us was R2. Um, there were all kinds of plans for what's gonna be developed back there. The development that was proposed for um, our <coughs> for that property eventually became Heron Point um, over here on the boulevard. And so that was a result of that fight about, um, about density and, um, the appropriateness of that, um, apartment complex, um, in that, in, in that particular site. So now over the last couple of years, um, there has been, uh, um, a renewed, um, push to develop that land behind us. And let me make it very clear. I am not, we, the group um, is not opposed to development. What we're looking for is a balance between the kind of development that goes um, on any place on the island, not just in, happens to be where I close to where I live, but maintaining some sort of a balance between the economic development that needs to take place on the island and the protection of <clears throat> what I consider to be um, what your values would be, which is the natural resources of the island. So how do you do that? So one of the things that um, was proposed was that we establish a buffer, um, a barrier, a wildlife corridor that would be significant enough between those two properties to um, allow for um, some habitat for wildlife. Um, it wouldn't destroy the existing um, ecosystem that was already there, and it would um, uh, provide a, um, a wildlife corridor that would relate to both uh, East River um, over to the golf course and um, back down along the river um, in both directions. So um, that has that had come um, before the board, and so that was the piece that um, that I spoke to uh, the board about. So on an immediate level, for the people that are involved in the East Riverside Woods um, uh, question of what's going to happen in that um, particular area. There's the immediate area or the immediate question of what happens to that property? What happens when the bulldozers come in? What happens when that land is um, is stripped? Um, what happens when um, the uh, entire ecosystem that runs behind those houses on Timberlink um, is basically bulldozed away? Um, when we first moved there, um, it was scrub. It was all scrub. It's now um, a huge grove of... Um, gray dogwood, there are mature trees, we have fox and rabbit and the deer are back there and it's a whole um, uh, community, if you will, of, of wildlife that live back there. Some of them, which like to come and eat my hostess and some of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so part of it has to do with the, um, the immediate issue of what happens um, in that property on that particular development. Um, the other part of it that I was interested in, in coming to you for was the bigger question of uh, in all of the developments that are being proposed on Grand Island, there are issues about density, there are issues about uh, drainage, there are issues about um, any number of, of items that are of concern. But um, uh, 
one of those issues um, is that whole business of a wildlife corridor. In what ways can we protect those areas um, when development goes up? And so that there isn't just the stripping of land, the knocking down of trees, the planting of a berm with a, you know, some blue spruce on it, and then that's the end of it. So um, I, I wanted to bring the issue um, before you, and um, uh, Diane was kind enough to ask, allow me to come or ask me if I wanted to come um, because I'm, I, I believe that there are a significant number of people on Grand Island who are um, of the same mind as I suspect you are um, in terms of um, protecting the, the resources of the island and uh, developing a mindset for the island that says that the, um, the preservation of wildlife quarter, the preservation of open space, the preservation of undeveloped land is a value for us in the same way that development is, is also something that we know and we, and we need on the island. So um, I'm not sure um, where this group stands on that whole issue, um, but I wanted to make a case both so that you were aware of the, um, the project going on or, or the, the prospect of a project going on um, in that uh, Whitehaven East River corridor, but also um, there are four or five different developments being proposed around the island right now. And so what, um, what is the capacity of the community, I think, for um, developing some sort of a uh, philosophy, a mindset, um, a set of uh, values that um, we hold um, to be important in, in the process of developing the island. So, so that's my plea to you. It would be that you um, uh, know a little bit about um, what's being proposed for that area back there. Um, and also that you um, uh, continue the work that you're doing. Um, and I, I read all your minutes. Um, wildlife corridor, you know, green space, planting of trees. It shows up in every every single one of the things that you do. And so um, uh, I'm active in a number of groups on the island. I would be glad to help in any way I could just to spread the good word, um, if that's doable, um, but also to um, uh, support you in whatever way you can um, to uh, take a, not take a stand, it's not the right language, um, just to become to address, vocal uh, about um, that as an issue for, for Grand Island. So anyway, that's my spiel. <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for coming in and, and, you know, addressing us. Uh, you're right. We do share the same mindset. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've seen plans. This is the, since I've been on the board, this is like the, the third um, set of plans that I've seen for yeah. that. Exactly. Oh, no, we're on number 12. Um, so I, I believe it. I believe yeah. so. Since I've been on the board, I've seen three, um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, you know, you know, looking at it, and of course we do. We, you know, we advocate, of course, for things like wildlife corridors right. and nature trails right. and things that yeah. are yeah. citizens. And, and it's interesting because on the on the town's website, um, in, in any number of of areas of the description of Grand Island as a community and of the things that are um, attractions for it, it has to do with with our relationship with nature. And so, if that's a value we put out there for people who might want to come to Grand Island, then how do we make that happen uh, here? So it it is interesting that um, our our long term plan addresses these kinds of things with businesses um, definitely. You know, we like park-like settings, small businesses and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, the residential side, there's there's, there's not much there. And I know what you thought, I'm looking right at the map. So, you know, between Timberlink and, and that development, mm -hmm. um, I do not know that this is necessarily, the, what, what I'm looking at is to, a, is, is to the correct zoning code. I think they're asking for some something uh, that, that is proposed that's that's not necessarily uh to code um you know but really it's um you know we advise the town board and the groups right if right. they you know you know advise you know yeah. send your thoughts feelings facts figures and all yeah. that stuff to the town board um yeah. that's 
you know, they're, they're the guys who ultimately, um, you know, are working with the developers in mm -hmm. hopes of getting something that is both a fit for our community and, um, you know, something that uh, is within the, the rights of the, the, the owners of yeah, the, the land. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's, we fight, we're, we're there. I think the zoning issue is, um, if I'm in, I'm sure Mr. Kilmer can correct me, um, the uh, the bulk of that property is is zoned R two um, and has been for some time. Um, there is a parcel um, I believe it's something in the neighborhood of fourteen acres that is a B one property. Mm -hmm. So um, part of the proposal that was put forth by residents was to um, rezone that fourteen acre property um, to uh, be included in the in the uh, R two and then to use a portion. A relatively small portion would be less than four acres that would create that um, wildlife corridor between those those two developments. So that's kind of where we're where we're looking. Okay. Now East River and the development is there is there like a is there a ravine there like there's there's something yeah there's a natural something there. Yeah yeah the elevation behind the houses on East River in some cases is really high and so there are drainage issues as well. So it um and I'm sure you know uh, builders, you know, are, are able to address those kinds of things, but um, uh, you've got 65 acres of at least some of it is salvageable for the kinds of things that we think Grand Island values. And so can we develop some sort of a um, <clears throat> a standard for uh, that would apply whenever these kinds of developments come along. So that when a developer comes in, they will know that this is a community that values green space, the community that um, is interested in preserving walking trails and um, uh, the kinds of access to natural areas that um, that we all that we value. So anyway. Hey, thank you so much for coming in. I have a and, question. Yeah. So at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned that the first development, um, you proposed, a, a or did the town pass a local law regarding? Yes, yeah, they did. So it. they lost it on the books? Yes. And how it's worded. Yeah, it's it's wor the worded. The planning board shall, the, shall. The, the town board may. May. So right. we don't have to. Yeah. But. Yeah. yeah, the planning board shall consider it, but the but the yeah. town board doesn't have to. I see. Um, and so you know we would, and that was not interestingly enough that was not the original language that um, uh, we thought had been agreed on, and it wasn't until some time later that we found out that that caveat was there. Um, you know, as part of that as well. Hmm. So you can put a little side no town board wants to have their hands tied by a yeah, word. Exactly. So May right. gives us the opportunity yeah. to go in either right. direction yeah. sure. based on yeah. based on community yeah. input. Yeah. And in some cases, I think you do, you're <laughs> looking for that balance between what the town board needs to do in terms of de allowing development, encouraging development. I don't want to capitalize on me, but here's a new plan. <laughs> 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 Number a new 13 plan or 120 foot wildlife corridor. <laughs> Developer? Came out today. Came this. out today. So this is much wider than the one I'm using. Yeah. Twenty foot wildlife corridor. They move. They, 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 they shift they, it this way. This way. What happens to the one parcel? It's gone. It's here. It's gone. Yeah. So. And the the compensation is fifty foot between instead of sixty. Yeah. So, what what people understand is what is the trade off? I'm not saying I'm willing to go. Oh, no, there, no, I understand. But if we're going to give wildlife corridors. We have to be fair to the developer and mm -hmm. maybe can squeeze in a little bit more. They give the wildlife corridor up. I mean, that's a, that's a concept. I don't know yes. if it's the right. way. Yeah. But this uh, thing. To, I didn't want to burst your bubble Good. at the beginning, but I, I didn't want to. <laughs> I don't want to take over these meetings. They're your meetings. <laughs> but I think to be fair, this is a pretty good plan from a developer if you're willing to look at this and realize it's not to code, but they're also giving up 120 foot mm -hmm. feet yeah. buffer wildlife quarter. So again, I, I, I didn't know if I wanted to introduce it to you guys today, but, but <laughs> since you, you would have asked about it, I would since this board is about yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. I, I, I figured I'd show it to you so you could maybe this so, is the one where we look at this is, at, one this is the next one that's going to be in front of the board. So this is 80 by what's the depth on these? 
Well, the beauty is that this shouldn't even be an issue for you now because now you got a 120 foot buffer. Right, Whether right. These, yeah. Because these aren't plugged yeah. up anymore. Right. How high is the buffer? It depends. I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know if there's going to be a a a berm. Oh, that, they're not okay. saying there's a berm. Oh, okay. There's no, a wildlife a corridor. Just, yeah. the, the wildlife. But, so you realize that berm is is a lot of topsoil they plan putting back right. into oh, yeah, the subdivision right. oh, yeah, when they were yeah, done. Exactly. I mean, they didn't put yeah. a berm there. For... But there's also a lot of crap buried in there. Yeah. You know, the building materials we spent when we moved into I don't know it's where I am right there, but the three lots next to us were empty, and we spent. Forever. In my mailbox today, just to so get, you guys know, I, I got um, this oh. Developer, uh, guys with dump trucks, and not to just dump you know stuff in there. So there's a lot of stuff in the back. So when we're talking wildlife corridor, then Mr. Kilmer, are we talking about um, leaving some of the leaving the existing uh, vegetation? That's I don't know yeah. if the berm is stained or not. Like I said, I got the four hours ago. It's, it's an kind of digest it myself. important issue for you that it not be disturbed. But, correct. It says but evergreen planting. Still a lot for a developer to give up. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, People, it's important that it not be disturbed. You want the yes. Well, yeah. I would think that would be something that you because if they just would have everything a, down yeah. and create a barren yeah. corridor, yeah. that all these right. evergreens. Have. Yeah, and that, that's that's why I asked because it looks like a row of evergreens mm -hmm. and, and which is not, the yeah. the lots that we're So what you're really looking for is the maintenance of like the, what's existing the there the to the depth that they've, they've agreed, agreed on. But I don't know, Mr. Kilmer, you were full of surprises. I don't know if I'm supposed to even share this, but. You know, what can, I can't be in trouble. It's going to be in front of the yeah, public in right. a couple of days. Anyway. This is fine. Do you know what we're saying, though? I mean, if the developers come in, I mean, that all looks great. But if developers come in and bulldoze everything and create it's this sort of, bulldoze there. and create this sort of sterile corridor, it's not really what Peggy and her. So, her so I think what yeah, I think what we're saying is, OK, so if we're going to leave a corridor here, I mean, it looks like all the development is to this side. I don't know of anything like can we can we can we leave that alone? Like is that, yeah, that would be the, the preference. We need to leave that alone. Yeah. Um, and at, at 120 feet, it the berm doesn't start until about here. I promised yeah, myself I here. wouldn't capitalize your meetings, but yeah. I'm going to say right no, now sure. that that a good friend of mine, Judge Mornello, now our assemblyman, always said that when pe two people leave the courtroom, if they're both mad at the judge, they did the right thing. So I'm <laughs> as a councilman, I will never be 100 percent right on this plan. But this is the best I've seen to date when it comes to yeah. buffer yeah. density. Right. Yeah. And, and, and a plan, balance, I yeah. think um, there will always be a plan that has negatives. Yeah. But this one is the best I've seen in front of me. Minus, I want, I would like to see more two car garages. That's the only thing I oh, want yeah, to see. Yeah, there was some conversation but about that. Yeah. Besides that, yeah. what I'm saying is I can't make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. To me, this is this this is building on what the former resident what the residents want. You guys, guys forget there wasn't even single family housing at first. So he, no, it was he outlined this whole thing with single family housing. Mm -hmm. This developer, I think, has done a good job of listening. Because every time his plan comes back, it's more to what the residents asked yeah, for. What, what so I, I'm not gonna beat him up. Uh, yeah. till kingdom come because I'm really sick of looking at pictures yeah. of this corner. <laughs> um, I, I, what I'd like to yeah. do is have this one go out to the public, get some really good in-depth feedback. And then, because I'll tell you that I personally said buffer and the superintendent said road back here. Yes. Make something like that. Those two things. I said, I want the buffer because the residents really are, are big on it. Well, you know, and Steve and, yeah. or Pete was big on having this road pushed back up against here. Yeah. So they they met both of our desires: me to try to help the residents that are existing. Um, and my yeah. yeah, my only concern, and I would ask the the um, conservation board to take a close look at what's being proposed in this area, mm -hmm. um, so that it's not a row of spruce. Right. Um, right. You know that it's not because that will then there's nothing in there. Uh, the the yeah. yeah, and yeah. that I think is your um. Uh, Green thing. Desire as well, in, in mm -hmm. that it, it would establish Green some kind of a, uh, an area that would still be um, no, habitat. What I'm saying is, I'm not promising that. I'm, yeah. so, yeah. I'm not promising anything. It just looks to me like a 120 foot wildlife corridor. If they're going to leave the berm and that makes you happy, then you guys can just talk to them. That's fine. But yeah. 
I know from a developer's point of I mean, view that that that's what they did according to John. Wasn't that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what what was supposed to. Oh no, it was that, the top, that, it was the top shell. They stripped yeah, off of boom, these lots. Build, bring it back, and do yards. So um, the um the uh, the berm exists. So I think I think this is me. So the berm exists from about here to maybe here. Well, that's all, that's Other all than there. that, it's all, it's, it's, all, it's, it's, it's all um, natural growth. Yeah, natural oh. growth. So the berm is not along the whole mm. thing. The berm exists between I mean, the Cotman's, which is here, and Hank, which is here. Oh, that's not even that big. So it's not even that big. It's and big, it's big it's highest behind me, um, and then it tapers off in both directions. So it, it would not be. Okay, that, yeah, that actually makes me feel better. I mean, I mean most utilities are front lot construction and not back lot construction so i mean there's the possibility that they don't even have to for any reason go that deep Just with the better. even with the dozers they don't have to go that deep so but it's a good question to ask yeah i mean what they compensated these yeah. lots aren't as deep as virtual yeah either um so and just to kind of amplify uh peggy yeah. on your concerns about like you know making um uh, you know, our environmental kind of ethos, like part of Grand That's Island. Perfect word. Um, so, yes, it is, the, you know, a lot of, you know, it is a lot of lobbying the town board. It is uh, that, too. But we have um, a, a long range planning committee. Yes. And that is meant to be like a living document mm -hmm. where, you know, things may get added and changed and, and you know, um adaptable things over yeah adaptable yeah. and so that committee there is is supposed to be you know kind of a representative of all the committees all the people you know okay. and and you know just like you know that's that would be a good spot to get if you're looking to you know, for future developments on the island to be more green and natural and wildlife corridors and yeah. nature trails and yeah. you know all of that stuff that's yeah. um you know there are parts of the long-range plan where that exists but like like I said, in and, private mm -hmm. um, and you know, so I, residential, it doesn't necessarily. This could no. be a really good precedent if we can get a developed. It sounds like you're going to leave some open space. Like you leave some natural vegetation. We can get that in the future, hopefully. Why bulldoze and put other vegetation if you already have vegetation there? It that's costs yeah. them time and money. So exactly. I would think they would love to leave. Yeah, just because space. basically they can bulldoze we right on the make sure when it's, yeah. they start building that. Yeah. That's in force that nobody disturbs. Well, so you, this is the only problem. thing you have to watch. I'd say is 80, yeah. but I want to tell you this, right? You're an older home and these are newer. Compared to the yes. existing change the building, building rules. It kind of looks like here in force. The new places are all built a lot higher than the old place. Mm -hmm. So I'll. No. Like, what I've experienced in my neighborhood is all that water goes right, right where right. everybody else. So, so that one more have, reason for that leaving the natural answer. Well, well, that 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 could could be like an issue though trees. if everything goes in there and they don't have some drainage going out. We need to, to be able to hear each other. So. Right. So, <laughs> so, so, so I mean, I don't know what that pitch is, but they may need to change that pitch so you don't flood. Mm -hmm. That was, I met, yeah. So I'm on the comprehensive board for okay. rep from here. We met last night. Okay. I raised that issue last night is I don't want those neighbors to get flooded mm -hmm. so they need to look at make yeah. sure that that water drains because just raising it up and putting a buffer in there it's just going to flush right down and bury you guys if there's no no pitch to it yeah well all the engineering has i mean yeah, they the can't even start their engineering until we give them a, an okay on a, okay that's what the on engineering a, begin. yeah just said the other impact on right. on drainage is going to be the amount of hardscape that goes in along with the houses. So, so that's a significant yeah. portion as well. What they've done is they've left a significant amount at the back of the line of um, the houses on each river. So that will be sure. a and is this all trees? Yeah, I don't know what it's all dying it's ash, pretty much. Um, you're starting to see like, behind us. We have um, probably maybe ten. And there's three mm -hmm. conversations. Yeah. I don't know, know what people are saying. Yeah. Okay, so how do I finish yours? Yeah. 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 Could you guys tell us what you were talking about? Just don't want anybody to be unheard. I was asking what kind of trees were in this area right here, and Peggy was where it says like dying permanent out. open space. I yeah. I wasn't. I don't know what that property looks like. I think that that. That's the ravine. dying ash in there. Is the like, I mean, a ravine, but those trees look like they're dying, right? There's a lot. So on the north side, actually the northeast side of the island, like 
you get into some areas where it's sixty percent ash streets in some places, yeah. and so like it's a significant can't be lost. You can see from the um, the photograph that this is overlaid on. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. see um, in the back quarters and in some of the areas where the the uh, vegetation is. Mm -hmm. What's the average lot size in the Grand Island single family home? You know, I can't even throw a dart at that because <laughs> <laughs> well, you have R one, you have R two. Yeah, where, where the septics are, they're all five acre lots. No, I mean similar to this. Small. Similar to this. I mean, these are what four of eighty by one hundred and forty. These lot sizes to code? Yeah, the single family and the patio homes are the, the only thing that's not to code is the distance between some of the townhouses that are 50 feet versus 60 feet. It's right here. It's to provide all, the, the buffer space. Yeah, right. they, had to, yeah. they had to give up, they, they're given the buffer they had, and, and they want to keep, you know, they got to make, they got to push them together. They're okay. trying to get a still uh, a, an amount of homes that mm -hmm. will. One of the issues that we would weigh in, that we would weigh in, and in terms of this open um, buffer around it. So here they have a monoculture of evergreens. Evergreens really don't flourish on Grand Island. No. Developers like to put them in, but in about a couple of years, they're just yeah. sort of dead yeah. sticks. Yeah. So I that would be number one concern. Plus, that we're very concerned about creating a monoculture of trees anywhere. Yes. You know, as a result of that, that ash, we're just going to whatever gonna go. yeah. hits them is going to hit them. Yeah. So which is why the existing vegetation layer, which good. would be further down the road, we would be weighing in on. We would want plantings of native tree species that create some diversity mm -hmm. and support for the birds and the wildlife that we're uh, that we're giving space to that are going to be homeless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need support <laughs> for the purposes of the minutes as well. In terms of listing the questions, um, I was just setting aside yeah, time to would... up about the. Go ahead. Yeah, it would be good. It would be nice to ask the developer what the intentions with that uh, 120 foot uh, wildlife corridor slash buffer is. And Should we invite someone to come for our next meeting? I, I I do feel I feel like we got time on this because this just if this just landed on his desk, we could actually just issue comment on that. Um, you know, next meeting, see where it's at yeah. because if he comes back and is like, you know, hey, that plan is, which yes. happens a lot, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and I'm, I, I try not, I'm not trying not to, over, over, but yeah. I'm thinking if they're doing a wildlife corridor, the last thing they want to do is touch it. Yeah. If I were a developer, yeah. well, I just the, the mature trees that are already there, why yeah. even bring my bulldozers in there? What it, what it shows is two evergreens per lot. I mean, they're very right. specific about what it shows. That, that's the guy at his desk having fun putting trees well, in there. <laughs> it says, so. It's a little icon. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, there's no engineering. Uh, and what I, I think you guys are right, what your input is, is, in the 120 foot buffer, we'd like to see some natural plantings of native trees. That I don't know trees. I'm not a good tree guy. You guys can get a diverse of trees. Yeah. Right. We we have a list. My favorite tree. There's I there's a list that the developers <laughs> can use of native trees. All right, so and they can pick from the list of yeah. trees that are recommended. Right. And also from the ones that are done. when the engineering is done, you'll have a better idea of how wet uh, right going to be back there and what's a, what's an appropriate. Is there any site work going on now? I mean, you could do site work without a permit. Right? Uh, uh, they go in there every once in a while and um, brush hog it. But other than that, I'm not going to. Nope. I'm going to mess with your folding. <laughs> I like the map. You get the map back. Yeah. And one of the other comments we had, we reviewed we the last one too. Yes. New phase. There wasn't a place to buy this. So, and, and we were still, they were still pushing. It's a car garage. It's, it's, it's yes. lack of it could be. So they were pushing for more, more two car oh. garages, oh, yeah. places Basically. to put snow because the inside roads are from the HOA, the outside roads, the town road. So the town road will plow it with mm -hmm. big plows. The other ones, yeah. they push the snow from what I understand. So they need some place to push it. So, yeah. um, and they usually push it at the end of a street and there seems to be a building at the end of the street. So. That was the comments, uh, more of the comments in the density. They were concerned on the density. Does your group have a next step they want to take? Or? Um, no, the, the next step was waiting to see how the dominoes yeah. fall. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, um, you know, what the town board does with this sure. plan. And then the, the committees that, like you said, have input into 
um, different aspects of the, or different uh, areas where, where they want some input into what the issues we'll are. Get a chance. So, yeah. So, yeah. so if it comes to uh, this group, you know, you have an opportunity to um, weigh in on it. Yeah. One of the other points you raised was the um, open space or the, the, the space, right, in the habitat. I believe, and, and you, you probably know, but when you build a house, there's X amount of dollars goes to a park fund. Uh, so I think it's a, a thousand a, a lot. Yeah, something like that. So if lot. there's a whole lot of lots, there's a lot of money that goes to a, a recreation for the mm. diamonds or, you know, for an open space. I mean, town purchased a long time ago that big track of property that comes pretty close to that, I think. Uh, just north of the one on the other, on the riverside yeah well it, there's a small access it's it's right. uh cemetery yeah the one next to the cemetery it's one the yeah. cemetery yeah. No, yeah you can access it's, back there it's actually state land oh is that no, no, the, 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 the town's on the other side of that oh, oh. The state town, could, town's got a little piece the other oh, that right. goes all the way back towards the high school cemetery the state school. town yeah right okay yeah. yeah right so that we we have a they purchased, that's when they put the trails and they paid all the money to put the trails in. Mm -hmm. But there's a, I guess there's a big like, buffer in there. So mm -hmm. that's why they're talking about maybe coming in from East River. Coming in from the river, yeah. Build, build that another little stretch of that town's piece of property. Yeah, said I think that was purchased. Through that, that's very so interesting, that, yeah. That oh. money. Oh, that's a dividing line. That, so so there's some, co some compensation so then. Yeah. But I, I didn't know that until the other day. So <laughs> learned something new every day. How often did the contractor meet with the neighbors? Do you know? Mm, the only Once. the only time we met with the previous proposal, which was you know many years ago, um, was when they posted uh, the thirty foot uh, surveyors post from our back line, mm -hmm. which was a we took that as a form of intimidation because that was that would be the back of. Um, the uh, 160 foot long apartment building. So that's the only surveying that I know has been done. In okay. That. But you went right with all your comment through the town then, right? Uh, to the contractor. No, we didn't. No, we had no, 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 no direct, no, no direct conversations with the contractor. In some ways, I don't know what organization, but Greg for GI, they, I meet with them and I put the developer and them at the same table at the visitor center. Oh, and they wow. they hashed out a lot of yeah so uh, that would be very yeah. helpful yeah they did it I put them together yeah. I said why don't you two figure out what you can agree on the engineer and Craig for GI what they want and I think that's what's gotten and then Pete's worked on Pete's worked on his end he's had a couple of meetings with the developer I I think we've done a, a you know a, we're a lot closer today than we were right, a few months ago and I think the developer is showing signs of Every time you guys ask him for something, he kind of leans into it. He doesn't give you a hundred percent, but he 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 leans into where he's taking possible profits out of his pocket and giving you what you want. So I kind of, I, I kind of. Well, and it, 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 to my mind, it's it's not only what we want, and and I'm speaking now as the re that residence in that area. The bigger issue for me is what whether it's good for Grand Island as right. a whole. You know, it's not. I mean. It's, the buffer is an issue. The wildlife corridor is an issue for us. But the bigger issue is how that plays out in terms of what happens mm -hmm. or, over yeah. Grand Island as a whole. If you took this picture and the picture we had when I first was sworn in with four apartment buildings, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, com four, three commercial buildings yeah. and apartment buildings, yeah. and what's in front of us today, yes, yeah. this is like a yeah. thousand times better. It's come a long, long So yeah. I, I, I don't know if we're 100% there, but I feel good at our at our progress with the developer and our progress with working with the with the residents at what they want like i said if both of you are mad at me when, when i'm done i did my job <laughs> so it seems like he has an open mind to the contractor and he listens to you right yeah i mean like uh, the only thing i'd like to i'd love for him to do two car garages but you know if he thinks there's a market out there i don't think there is but if he thinks there's a market, he's he's spending the money to build one car Thomas, so they don't yeah. sell he's eating them yeah <laughs> i mean and then yeah. that's and they build they don't build these things all in one day so if they're sitting on the market for sale and they're not selling mm -hmm. he's probably gonna come back and ask if you can build two car yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I, I think if the market bears one car garages and they sell, then yeah. I was wrong. He was right. <laughs> if they don't sell, I was right. He was wrong. So, Mr. Cohen, do you see then an opportunity for this group um, and the residents to sit down with the developer and um, look at some of the <clears throat> environmental issues that have come up here? I think once we have, I think once the town board approves a plan, mm -hmm. um, the I think the part that we have again, I hope I'm not overstepping my boundaries. I, I'm just the liaison here. <laughs> is I think what what you said. I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, Sue. Sue. What Sue said is us putting together a list of what we think should be the natural planting mm -hmm. and how we'd like to see the uh, the natural wildlife corridor managed during the development would be what our input is. Mm -hmm. okay. If you guys think there's more to it, then I might, I might not understand my part here. <laughs> I think you would welcome that versus just going in there blind and, and picking some stuff and hope, you know hoping that that's all right. Given the input in the first place. But until we get the plan like, approved, approved. approved. We, we keep, we're throwing darts. So yeah. once we get an approved plan, we know that, that the quarter is going to exist and what we asked for is actually going to happen. And I think you guys would, I think then that's when you guys engage and help determine what should happen. Is the town board asking for us to approve the current plan? No, no, I got this in my office. My, Mailbox four hours ago. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm supposed to show it to you, but I felt that at the perfect time to also put some of her probably put at ease that it has been considered in the in the in the most current plan does have a hundred and twenty foot buffer. So that's and it gives this committee an opportunity mm -hmm. to to give some serious input into what you want to see in that area as well. Right. Actually we, we looked at a different plan last night that we commented on. At this table, so, <laughs> they didn't didn't even see that plan. Is but, but they did. You see, your it's, point, it's they, they, this afternoon. They, mean, it, it they, they the moved it. You know the the road and some of the comments we made too. So I mean, we're all we can comment. We've commented on these plans before to the town that we like or don't like. Yeah, I guess I was what I was getting at is sort of like based on what you were saying, Dan. How like is the town like? I mean, you may not be able to answer this, but like. The, the plans that just came in, would you say the town is sort of like close to approving them? I think, yeah. I, I personally am close. Okay. And I think the other board members are probably, if nothing else, beat down enough. <laughs> We've been, we have been dealing with 12 years. 12 I think years. I've only been dealing with for, for four months and I'm ready to see. <laughs> but it's not like they're saying it's all or nothing. They have changed this plan. Like I said, this had four apartments, four 10 unit or four 12 unit apartments yeah. at the first yeah. thing, at the round one. Yeah. And the density was huge. So yeah. we've come a long way. Th um, this density is still high. It's still, the, the density the is still comprehensive high. plan yeah. list right. density yeah. for single homes right. at like 2.1 per acre yeah. and multi those patio homes at like 4.5 yes. or five. So I, I think the density on this is still. Yeah. pretty high it's too well it's, it's too it, something it, it depends it depends on how you do the arithmetic right yeah the whole 65 acres yeah, yeah, yeah right. you're, taking, you're water. taking in the ravine you're yep. taking right. In, exactly right yeah. so he's the developer is so, going to say it's 65 acres divided by the house no no of course and, and, and if you're on the other side you're going to say well you can't count the ravine so it, it, I mean, right. so anyhow this there's there's still 216 and 72. So, mm -hmm. uh, so what's on, Mr. Cameron, what's on the very, um, the very east end of that proposal between the proposal and East River? Oh, this is another piece of B. This is another B. That's one, the B one, one yeah. right? This is, is that B the Hamlet one? Yeah, this is not owned by this right. gentleman. That's it, yeah. That's what I thought. Else. No, the, the Hamlet is the entire region. Region. Right. It is, is not. This it's not that more, property. more in the right. hamlet, right? So the hamlet is just mixed use, right? Generally, okay. interesting. The hamlet, believe it or not, I'm not. I don't capitalize me. It's <laughs> go ahead. So we really appreciate you coming. Thank right. you very much. And I appreciate you. you've given me a tremendous amount of time, and I'm I'm very appreciative of of doing that. It, if this is a public meeting, may I just kind of sit in and. Sure, is, that, so, yeah. is that okay? Yeah. I will just yeah. 
pull back out of the way and sure. and, and, and I missed what group um you're representing. Um this is a residence group. Oh okay. From that area. Yeah, thank you very much. It's always nice to hear. Oh, it's, it's, I'm I'm very grateful to all of you for giving me the time. I know that that's a, a huge piece of your meeting, and I appreciate it. So, um, yes, uh, Dan said he just got this, so I don't necessarily think we need to offer advisement until so he, if this goes out to the public and it comes. We're going to have time at our next yeah. meeting to weigh in on. You know, if it stays, that's great. I would. You know, I just want to throw out there, and I know it's in our minutes already, just asking the question about that buffer to make sure it's, is it going to be touched? Is it going to be untouched? What's what's your plan with that buffer? Um, it seems like, you know, uh, residents and, you know, us as an advisory board would like to see, a, you know, just leave it be. Um, you know, I mean, if you want to plant more trees, plant more trees, but plant the right types and diversity of trees. If, if you do want to plant the trees, um, you know, nobody's going to say don't plant trees. Okay. Um, but you know, we might say don't take trees down. Like that's or that's monoculture, like yeah. Yeah. And yeah. specific things that aren't gonna yeah. last. And it's always good to see, you know, it's always good to get back there. Um, I will say, uh, Dan, if you run into the developer or whatever, um, or if you can get me in contact, uh, we like to get out and walk these places too, because like there could be who knows, like the soil could be bad, it could be trampled, it could be you know, there's lots of things that are out there. So if a few of us can get out there and just take a look and see what's what's happening back there, that would be um, that would be helpful. I mean, we've done that. I th probably say it does. Yeah, you know, six or seven times since I've been on the board, and and we always come back better informed and um, you know, we're able to offer a, a better perspective. So, um, all right. So. As a matter of housekeeping, mm -hmm. I do have the questions in here, but mm -hmm. how did you want those ultimately ending up with the town board? We had talked before about our liaison taking them back to the town board. Are we going to be doing like a, hey, here's your list of things we want you to take to the town board, Dan, kind of thing? Because um, it can't just be in the minutes and then we hope that, that it gets. There. So how about this? If, um, you send you out the, if you send out the draft minutes, mm -hmm. I can forward the questions to the town board. That way they know, like, listen, this is not, these are not our approved minutes, but these are the questions that our board has. Okay. And that way, if, if they are in, like, I don't know, like you guys have so many meetings, like if you're in the right meeting, you can, you know, drop drop that question. You know what I mean? If that's possible. If if not, we, you know, offer advisement at our next meeting. So. Thank you. I think we've already offered advisement on one of the previous plans. On this we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we did. We'll probably do the same on. We won't go. The, I mean, they've got the the depth. Yeah. So because we we asked for wildlife buffer, mm -hmm. we asked to make sure there's enough trees on mm -hmm. each property. We, we asked for a number of things already on this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, uh, all right. So. We're going to move on. So, you know, there was talk of a checklist. There was an email that went out and circulated. Um, honestly, I, I just kind of created a chart and um, I'm going to share this out with all of you. And it's just kind of the beginnings of the checklist. But you saw that we kind of repeat the same stuff over and over again. You know what the community wants. It's the same stuff. So um, the goal and I think we wound up saying, hey, listen, let's why not? Put that into the developer's hands before they even start like if they come in and they, they they pick up you know they got the planning board checklist why can't we just say you know okay the trees are the big thing and then we can reference the code because that code is it, it exists for the trees right uh 32733 such trees shall be planted in the front yard setback area spaced at intervals of not more than 50 feet right so if the lot is bigger than 50 feet then it gets two trees if it's you know, not as wide as 50 feet, then it gets at least one tree in a new subdivision. We do feel that has to be followed. So um, I'm creating a checklist and number one is trees. And then I, I put the law. OK, and but the rest of it is not necessarily law, but it goes with the long term plan. But there are kind of asks that always come up and that always fall into our advisement. So if the developer is going to come and and develop the land you know wildlife corridors are in there um i just put a, a brief statement this is wildlife corridors provide a, a pathway for wildlife to move freely around grand island this has become more necessary as development has increased 
Um, you know, this prevents many wildlife encounters within the new subdivisions. Um, you know, that's, you know, the, the, oh, ma the main... Helps. It doesn't prevent, yeah. right? Well, Mitigate, that is maybe. True. Maybe I should say... I saw turkeys in my front yard. This I said prevents <laughs> many, so we can I change... I saw a turkey car Me crash too. in my rear room here the other day. Uh, how about I change prevents many to decreases? Yeah. So decreases wildlife encounters with the new subdivisions. I did put trails because trails are a big thing. Pete's really good about, you know, talking to the developers about trails too. Um, nature trails provide a place for residents to get outside near their homes and apartments. They also add to the quality of life and may may increase the value of the property. Things like that are more sought after if you're near a you know, bike path or a nature trail. So um, I put that there. So I did one, two, and three. So now um, you guys can. So I kind of, I looked over the planning board list and made notes as to how they might reword things, but oh, that's interesting. You I have like... the idea that we're going to create a separate list. Well, okay. or or they can oh, join yeah. that list. Yeah. But okay. either way, like it would be nice if it made it into the developer's hands. Right. At out the of the gate, okay. because because they go and they do the design, they're not thinking about all this, and then they're like watching all these meetings, and they're like, oh, well, they want they want corridors, they want they want trees, they want. You know, and then they're, you know, and, you know, so, that, but, you know, they may be at a point where they're like, I don't want to do any of that stuff. Whereas if they had it initially, they could like yeah, build, work, it in. build it in on their yeah. first, you know, design. In the, I looked at the town code today and it's interesting the way they describe the old CAB's responsibilities. So this is under section 39 slash 5E. Which one? 39 slash 5E. It says that, that's us, yeah. It says review applications received by the town board, the building department, the planning board, or other administrative body that concerns the user development of any open area listed in the open space index. Interesting. The conservation advisory board shall submit a written report to the referral body within 45 days of receipt of such application. Such report shall evaluate the proposed use of or development of the open area in terms of the open area planning objectives and shall include the effect of such user development in the open space index. So I think we have to include some of that language. This is in the code, you're saying. Yeah, this is under the conservation code. And uh, okay. yeah, so I, I, I do remember reading this. Yeah. And, yeah. Kind of anchors what we do to the open space index and the open space plan. So, I mean, I created a checklist kind of like very basic for us, like internally, like the date of the receipt of the application, because mm -hmm. that starts the run of the 45 days. Does this proposal impact the use or development of any area listed in the open space index? That would be the first. Um, evaluate the proposed use or development of the open area in terms of the open area planning objectives and include the effect of such use or development. And, you know, it's just sort of breaking down in their language, which is kind of broad, but once we do have the open space plan, then that's the, that's what we should be using to analyze developments that come in. But the limitation is that our index is ten acres or more. Yeah, so we put so it's kind of like a, a subset of what we do, right? It kind of surprised me. I had there are you know we have caught things a little less than ten acres that we've identified that hey yeah. we might like to have mm -hmm. that as green space. Um, so, but this kind of goes to Peggy's discussion in terms of consistency and, and sort of the big picture of what we have for Grand Island, um, you know, relating it back to the open space index and the plan. I like it. Kind of makes a stronger argument. I mean, yeah. what do you expect out of Like, I'm a contractor, I'm coming to build something, I, I want a permit. So I got all the, you know, information, but what else are you going to give him? You're going to give him a, a checklist and say, here, fill this out, although it's not required by law. So, so no, some of the checklists do have laws. There are laws yeah. that are not followed, and we've established that. There the are, landscaping. yeah, the landscape code is just not followed, and it's right. not enforced by the town. So we need to draw attention to that. Yeah. Um, and maybe we draw attention to that by getting it into their hands right away. Okay, but is that a permit requirement? It's if it's in the law, it should be a permit requirement versus just handing them something. It's a checklist. 
That's what I think. I, I, I see what you mean. I do not know the answer. Yeah. The, the problem is there's certain things we want that I know. are nice to it, have. It, it is, but I'm the contractor. I'm saying convince me on this. You know, I just take a piece of paper and I read four pages and yeah, it's nice, but it's not recorded. Well, they have but, to but, but they got all the other Jeff stuff for the department that's, that's regulatory required. Right. They have to have a site plan that's in right. the yeah. code, and they right. have to have a planting plan. Yeah. So that's where we can weigh in right. in terms well, of species lists. I, I would say what isn't in the checklist for the permit that's required by law. If it's like you're saying, add those to that mm -hmm. checklist. Right. So when in, mm -hmm. when a contractor comes in, the planning, whoever gives them a, a checklist, it's on that checklist and it's required by law. Right. That's all I'm saying. You want to include what, whatever we come up with. Yeah. If, in, and and just have one thing. Checklist, yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I think that's what was that. But, but then you need two checklists. You need one that says this is required by the law. Mm -hmm. Right. And you would like the one that says they'll put some solar panels on and mm -hmm. yada, right. yada, yada, right? So, you know, chargers for electric vehicles if your density is high or whatever. whatever. Well, what? this, this checklist already has a section that says additional consideration. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need to. But there's that. another, uh, there's it, that's a checklist, but there is a, a permit. They have to re, have to submit this information. There's a lot of other things on it that, that we saw before from the uh, from the town for the permit, I they see. need to have, you know, they, they have it. I see what you're and saying. And they check in it. And then make sure they have everything so when they go for that permit, you know, they, it's there. I think where they... So this is, oh, sorry, the, the, per, they fill, the developer fills up this checklist and it's submitted to the planning board, I believe. And the planning board reviews it. So I think to the to the point of what this is used for is the planning board then when it's submitted is going to go through this point by point and see whether the developer has done all the things on here. And I think to the purpose of this group and what we're um, trying to accomplish, if we were to integrate a little bit more without like going, you know, making this too uh, cumbersome and onerous to a developer would then the planning board would have it right in front of their face as they're going through the checklist they are as opposed to like doing something different or separate mm -hmm. that they're already looking at this if we you know just make some additions to this mm -hmm. then part of their thought process would have to include like what sue was saying is in the code you know does this impact areas of significance to our natural resource index which hopefully it, once this RFP gets out, we it may also include the inventory and the open space plan. How does the, you know, so I guess. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I think there's another, there's a wide list for for getting a permit. There's other items. And most of all those items are required by, you know, the building codes and that kind of stuff. So that it makes it easier for the person checking it that they they have the back. Well, you think the town clerk's office would have that? I don't know. Where do you go for a permit? Code right here. Right here. Oh. Right. But here's here's again. I, I'm going to make two st statements. I think the problem that you guys have identified that might it might there might be a fix because I've only been in this in this business for a short period of time on Grand Island. It's not the site plan because we can add the things you want to the site plan that make sure the developer follows the law. I believe there's, we somehow need to get on the punch card list when our code enforcement goes through and looks at the final plan. Because what's happening is I can put anything I want in my site plan, but is is code enforcement when they give the, you know, the final approval and the CO documents or the, the, the certificate of occupancy has all those been met. And it, does he use the site plan as a punch list, or does he use something else as a punch list? And He's got we... something that's in addition to that. Okay, so I'm, I'm saying I think what we're doing to get make sure we get in front on the beginning is good. We also need to make sure we're on, on the right before the CO's uh, 
Oh, okay. they, they have they have followed There's what the site plan says. Rest. And I don't know if that is done. And I'll talk to Ron. I'll, I'll give him a call tomorrow. He, there may be a cross reference that Ron does do. I would go to the site plan and makes a punch card to make sure everything that they promised they did. I and I don't want to say they're not doing it. I don't want to say they are doing it. Yeah, I, I don't know. So, one area we're aware of is they're not following through with what is in the law for solar for solar farm. No, they're not. Things are not being enforced. Yeah. Um, That's just that, one example. For, I, yeah. For the trees, it doesn't wind up on what is officially approved by the planning board and then the town board. And so there's no trees, even though it's in the law. And so code enforcement will enforce like I, I the ball right, is dropped. I understand like, if they if they like, approve so, it and the and developer goes, I gotta approve without trees, I have I don't have to plant all those trees. I understand what you're saying, but we have to somehow if there if it's in the site plan and then as she described, the, the planning board goes through the site plan. And if we add what we want to add to it, it should that should cover that it's in the initial yeah. application. And then the next phase is to make sure it gets on the punch card. I don't, know. I don't know where the breakdown is. If there, there may not even be a breakdown. It may be happening. It may all be good. I just don't know. I don't want. I don't want to. There's a law under landscaping. It cites specifically yes. how many trees have to be planted yeah. per lot, et cetera. So I assume that's in the site plan. What then happens is they're not planted, and you know there's no nobody. Code enforcement doesn't have that, right. so they don't. Enforce so there's a it. breakdown. Yeah, somewhere. It's kind right. of ironic. I and meanwhile, we're writing letters of advisement. Yeah. I think that it's even ironic. last year, when yeah. we were talking about this, that you'd mentioned just like citing the actual law, like yeah. in that sheet right there, just mm -hmm. referencing the law because it's not, yeah. but to just pop it in as like a reference. So if the I think if a developer writes it into a site plan, it would be hard for us not to hold them accountable mm -hmm. at the end because he wrote it. I mean, his initial thing to us was he would do it. That's why I think you guys are right for adding it mm -hmm. and making sure it's in, it's in the initial mm -hmm. site plan. So, I mean, we have some decisions made. I Like, we could add it to the planning board, but then the planning board, that then that yeah. responsibility pops on their lap to mm -hmm. look at the conservation stuff. And I don't know. No, if it's a law then. It's not, they don't well, that's true. They said that's, they follow the law. Yeah. Right? That's, so <laughs> but they like, I feel like the law could definitely go on to that. Yeah. yeah. And they there are things they won't want to accept to change. Yeah. I can tell you right yeah. now. And they, yeah. might, they, and they may go for an exemption to that part. They may ask for it. And then that's when you guys have to say, we don't think it should be mm -hmm. exempted. And then yeah. that's when you have mm -hmm. your inner turmoil. <laughs> but I think also if we add some things um, to your point about like things that are not necessarily required by law, if whatever that might be, if a developer chooses to do those things, then it, you know, when it comes down to negotiating time, you know, then if they decided they're going to put, for example, like electric char uh, car charger stations and not required by law, but something that we would perhaps look favorably on, that they know right from the beginning, like, hey, if you're going to wind up coming to us and asking for variances or this and that like here's some things as a community we'd like to see so i guess that would be my pitch for why to include some things that aren't necessarily required by law but things that mm -hmm. re reflect what we'd like to see yeah like i had jotted down like uh, number 13 for building details consider rooftop solar i mean it's not required but at least you know somebody might do it or um but, but I would like dark to... sky lighting if you're gonna do lighting, yes. you know, we prefer that you do, do dark sky lighting, but it's not in a law right now. Right, but but should... like the solar one we've touched on be. before is maybe you should say on fifteen percent or twenty percent of oh, houses, right? Because if you just say for for you consider it and they go, Yeah, we consider it, we're not gonna do it. But right. if you say, right. hey, we would like to see it on a, a mm -hmm. portion a of portion. your mm -hmm. properties. Right, because I mean, you drive down around Grand Island. There's a lot of people have solar on there, right? And there's getting more all the time. So I think we should be putting a percentage on, and we can always go change it later. But That's you know, pick, pick a percentage. We, you know, twenty five percent of the houses we would like to see solar. On. You know, if he negotiates to buy, well, you know. So here's here's one that um, made me think of the tree ordinance that never made it through. 
the uh, grilling. <laughs> Number five is a property survey. Um, plotted to scale, topographic features, including blah, 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 including large trees. That's all it says. Building structures, streets, property lines. So why can't we put in there some wordy about trees that are above a certain diameter? You need to either save them or mitigate them and plant those somewhere. I mean, this is a chance for us to get in some of the things that we couldn't do with the, with the tree ordinance. And I, and I think to Peggy's point that she made several times in her presentation, the language is on our website, the ethos mm -hmm. of Grand Island, you know, the spurl field, the, you know, we're important right. birding area. We should have a paragraph that says that, that explains why we prefer developers that include these things, because mm -hmm. we care about the millions of birds that cross Grand Island every, every season, you know, that's why we would prefer dark sky lighting, like we need to we don't. We can't assume that people know this information and hope that when they do know it, that some of them will be persuaded to. Is there any kind of incentive we can offer to developers to do something a little extra like that, like well, put in well, a? I don't know I what as you said. Um, pardon? You know, then there's some negotiating room. So yeah, like they were seeking a different zoning or something that's out of the ordinary. Well, you've given mm -hmm. us this. We'll consider that. I don't know yeah. if there's anything specific, but I know with like different types of construction, you know, there's star and there's different ways of mm -hmm. like ranking construction right. mm -hmm. as far as how, you know, eco-friendly or green or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that there might be something comparable and, you know, something like that might mm -hmm. be interesting to look at as a way of, you know, incentivizing or. Yeah, yeah. But I think when you go for a permit, you hand, hand them the, what's required, but then have a separate document, whatever you want to call it, that has, you know, all the environmental kind of stuff that you want in there for consideration. This way, at least, you think he knows that I got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how you, you yeah. hand you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure developers that work with other communities have a sense of what the community wants. The developers have told us that. When we work yeah. in Amherst, we know they want this. When we work in Lewiston, we know what they want. Mm -hmm. So when they work in Grand Island, this is an expectation. So as you guys have been talking, I've been adding to check. I've got five things on it. I don't, I don't necessarily think this has to be a or anything today, but we should probably get at least a uh, something into in front of the town board soon. At least that the law one that you know absolutely we need to start enforcing that free landscaping law that just needs to happen. So, um, I'm you know Dan, I'm going to share this with you too, and this is just kind of a living document right now. But like that first one, I would put in the category very important. Uh, follow the law and the rest are kind of right now in the we would like to see and we don't know where we're going to put those yet but should we give it to them before we're ready Maybe. no i don't think that this is i don't think like um like the we would like to see is as important as the law like mm -hmm. i would just like to see the the you know number one you know get in there but. so here's what it says for landscaping plan landscape plan indicating location, type, and size of existing trees and vegetation, identifying those to be preserved or removed, as well as location, type, and size of trees, vegetation, and amenities to be provided. Now, there's a lot there that the developers don't do, but this is in, where is this is in the planning board checklist, site plan application checklist. Where was that? Um, I'm looking at number 19. 19. Okay. So, so I think what, in terms and of again, like that's we, not in force. That maybe yeah. that's the main, I don't know, maybe that's. From, from what everybody's saying, it sounds like, I mean, and this is, this would be my thought on it, is to redline the existing checklist and add our edits for adding yeah, in the law saying. where where the it's appropriate to refer them to sections of the code and Diane, like to your point red you know you, you 
cross yeah. out the word large trees and you add in the more descriptive language that yeah. we feel belongs there and we work off this existing document and then when we present something to the board, it's basically saying these are the amendments that we'd like to see to the planning board checklist and we would like to see enforcement. Well, for us, it would be suggestions. What would the Long Range Planning Committee think of all this? They'd want to review it. Planning board would want to review it, right? Mm -hmm. Code enforcement, definitely. Oh, yeah. Kristen, yeah. Are you suggesting that's up, to, that's up to the planning it? board. We can only yeah, recommend to the silly. planning. If the planning board says, hey, this is good the way it is, and they take it, that's I mean, fine. If they say, well, let's refer this to other boards, that's up to them. Yeah, that's that's true. not really, no, that's right. not what we do. So that's up to them if they want to mm -hmm. you know, gather input. So we could make some changes and see. But what do you think? Should we work on the two different list ideas or should we stick to? Well, I would like to get a list going where these things end up. We can decide at the very end. We can decide, hey, this should be on the, that planning board list or or maybe this needs to be okay. a separate okay. thing. Okay. Like, yeah. So do, what do you have for trees? Like size, diversity? Okay. So as you've been talking, so, so I put trees and then I put, I put the, the 327 law, right? Which states trees shall be provided in all residential subdivisions, you know, uh, 50 feet apart. Okay. I, that's what I put now down like number five, I have landscaping, right? And I put follow the landscaping plan as described uh, in the site plan checklist, consider leaving old growth trees in place during development or moving them within the development. That's why. So, I, you know, I, and like I said, for and number four, I have energy. Consider rooftop solar. Consider dark sky lighting. And I'm somehow going to add this Grand Island as a designated Ramsar corridor for birds. And consider electric vehicle charging stations in high population density areas. Um, and you've already heard the wildlife corridors and trips. So, like, and that's just me. We, sh we need to have one question that deals with the stream beds, the creeks. Don't you think? Um, the vegetation alongside. Yeah, the, how could we put it? Well, maintain the buffer um, by the, right. there's supposed to be like a, isn't there supposed to be like a 15 foot buffer be from the creek? To where? Property. I don't you're, know. You're not, I don't, you're not supposed to go, at least, I mean, there's a recommendation, right, from DEC or whatever that you don't want to be at the creek. True, I'd have to look that up. I mean, we can suggest, like, you know, in the absence of, of vegetation around the stream that they plant, um, you know, uh, approved native trees and shrubs along the stream. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, what do you call it, living shorelines yeah. should be in here somewhere or should be in our recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, and what if they're going to walk the property and find out about it, I don't Make sure there's no endangered species or threatened. Um, and this is just, again, showing my ignorance to this entire process. But when they do the site surveys, who do they bring with them? Is it? None of us. So it's, None just, of it's, the it's, it's in the checklist. And yeah, like. So that they could just go and say that there's nothing of. of yeah. yeah. And, and that's and, the way it stands right now. And, and we have found we have found things like walking the property that we would not have seen, you know, without right. walking the property. Um, and so, you know, that's, it's one of those things like, you, you, you know, we just kind of take their word for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it depends on, you know, I mean, there are some things that you can see from a mile away and there are some things that you, you, you have no idea depending how big it is. So. Is there like a shared doc or something? It just emails us just out of your concern, but. Anything that is rooted in some existing law or regulation already should be set apart and dated. Oh, yeah. Like, like, like that. You missed so clear. Yeah. Um, so if it's already part of the. So we do have to take a look at the, the, the landscape in here. Yeah. yeah that, right. And then, Diana, I'm sorry, the, the, the living shoreline or the stream buffer, the 15 feet, is that part of what, what authoritative? It's not something that's regulation right. or record. Or is it just recommendation? Guidelines. It's a guideline. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. 
I, I think there's been, uh, I mean, we had presentations in stream beds before, right? Yeah, a long years time ago. ago. Yeah, a long time. Five years ago. Well, yeah, we tried, to, we had programs to try to educate people who lived on the streams, mm -hmm. how they could handle their stream bank better and gave them suggestions for plantings and all. I mean, we can redo stuff like that. We haven't done that for a long time, but um, I know there's some problems with dealing right now with DEC and trying to figure out what we are allowed to remove from creeks and what we're not. Yeah. So I won't get into that, but sometime I'd, yeah. we, it would be interesting for us to talk about that. We're, yeah, we need to uh, get permission to clean our, you know, our natural waterways up yeah. because it's slowing down. Yeah, yeah. It's slowing down the water, getting to getting out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so anyway, I added something like yeah, that to number <laughs> five. I don't know. It's only, yeah. I didn't answer your question, uh, Liz. Ask me again. Of course, read the recommendations. <laughs> that's just, that's I, at the document where you would maybe find oh, okay. uh, guidelines about stream. Okay, buffers. I'll look for that. Yeah. I just think anywhere that we can cite, okay, you know, an existing regulation guideline or law. All right. That's like the most important thing. This is just a recommendation, and it's not. I, that's the, I think um, what you said, Jeff. The the number one thing. I think we need to get the verbiage right on that. It's on the checklist already. We can pick which number we want to add it to. Mm -hmm. Present that, and we can get it added. Because the bigger list you give us, the longer it will take us to satisfy seven things. But if you give us one thing. And then we say, well, we'd like it to say this, this, we get this, the verbiage the way we want it. And then mm -hmm. add it to our um, site plan, our site plan. I think it's a faster process than to get a, yeah. a list of that 10 things. Cause 10 things will have 10 things wrong and they'll have to go to different departments for review. And we'll be having the same discussion and, you know, next May, April meeting. But if we do the one, that we're all in agreement with to follow the law and add it to the to the number of the site plan review. Yeah. I think we should, it's up to you if you want to handle it that way, but I think that that would be a smart way to move forward, get one dot, one and done. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to do the list of the more of the recommendation right. suggestion things, those are recommendation suggestions. The other one seems to be more crucial in, and part of our law. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm letting your committee. Well, you guys handle the way you want to handle it. Oh no, I'm. But I don't want me to carry water. I wanted to give this to you. It's yeah. easier for me to carry something I can get past yeah. the goalie because it's something that's worded properly. It makes sense. It follows the law, and what what it's lacking is part of the challenge. It's and part of the. One of our number one. That's our number one priority. Right? So, yeah, in in saying that, like the, I mean, there's I'm I'm not reinventing the wheel here all i did was write trees and here's the law yeah and that's but, it but you guys need to give me direction to take that verbiage that paragraph to the board and say hey this add it to the cab would like to add this to the site plan review we'll send it off to ron he'll review it probably engineer will review it and we'll, it'll come back to a board and we'll up or down vote on it whether, whether we should change it or not change it but it, I just think if we get too big of a list, mm -hmm. that makes we'll sense. get nothing. One at a time, and we'll get there. Jim made a point, which I think is important, um, consistency. So, you know, we worked on language for the um, design standards. We talked about trees and the list of trees. I think we should make sure that when we're talking about a list of trees, we use the same list. Mm -hmm. So people are like, well, what books, you know? So we have consistency across all these different docs. Did we ever put the tree list out on? I, I, I remember seeing it. I, I think read, I have it as a spreadsheet somewhere. I have. No, if we didn't, we should. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. You know, we should just refer to the I think current, they were redoing the website when we were like, one on it. will sit on the town board's right. website. Right. Therefore, if we changed it anywhere along the way, it, it refers to the official one on the website. Right. And just say, 
which category would I can remember working with Rhonda for this idea, but I don't know if it ever got completed. Um, which category would we're looking be, at any minutes? I think it would be included in it. Even in other words, what part of the website was I, I, look I would give that to Rhonda, right? Yes, yeah. when she did when we true. did the trails. She put out the trail sheet she, she we're just just new, just before we buried it under yeah, us. Yeah, and I think it was yeah, her yeah. park star. Now she has I was going multiple to look at it. To get. I saw she has one called mm -hmm. you know, Maps and Trails or something. And then you can also get to it a couple of different ways. You can get to it by a search bar. So R Rhonda did a nice job on Thanks. what she was doing on that one. So I would think that you know, she can put one out there as a tree inventory Probably list. Look through our old minutes to find the list because I think we, I've got the list mm -hmm. in a separate place, not just with minutes. I have, okay. I've been, yeah, I've well, should give it to Rhonda because in the design standards, it's a link to list, mm -hmm. yep. but there's no link. So, I mean, same thing on this checklist. It could just say, it could have that link. Right, just make the link to you the know, list. You know, refer to this list right. and include the link. And it's not, like, to, to and I think the point, it's was, not asking for, like, a huge yeah, thing. Right. It's right. just saying, refer to the list that right. you're supposed to refer and to. And the, right. the, the discussion with Rhonda was, where is it going to go on the town's website? Yeah, all right. Is it going to parks? Is it going to go under the Right. Yeah, I mean, it should go with all the other... Uh, okay. I mean, I mean, just potentially, where where all these other zoning and the right, parks sign department got it. lists are right. Yeah, I would think. Yeah, the only thing that I worry about a link is when they work the website, so links are always broken. They Nobody ever goes up. Oh, yeah. I, I would prefer to say on the town's official website, you can put a link in, but. I mean, how many links have we all hit on? It says, you know, 808 or 404 or whatever, that crazy. Well, as long as you name the document correctly. Yes. I mean. Then they can search on it. So I, I just have a question, too. So, like, the approved tree list, is that something that's going to change a lot? Like Probably not. So would it not just to, like, be included on whatever, like, just to have an appendix on the design standards where the elite, like, the, that actual document has the tree list like at the back of it, like Diana, I don't. Is that the one that Dave Cole made? Maybe that's something yes. that the Excel spreadsheet has a longer okay. Okay. Ah, that, right. that we could put together, like in a but one one was one, me. Yeah, whatever. One, Which I think Dave, we kind of. I think I had a problem with that one. Oh, so some in addition to we have a living school here. here for yeah, that looks right. Okay, let's see what yeah. else here. Park Street list. Yeah. Think maybe to yes. this. Where did you find one them? thing to be fine? In my we made box folder on my computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So I was looking on the town <laughs> side. Mm -hmm. on right. There. So, do you want and me to separately as like a just let me know what you want me to do with it? But like, maybe just to send it to everybody. Yeah, I'll email and it. And then I'll, maybe again. I'll check with Ron about looking for mm -hmm. for conservation. Maybe she's already got it somewhere, mm -hmm. or where's the best place? Be, because Ra Rhonda runs the webs okay. for the town, I so think. I will, uh, oh, the, those, okay. those, those duties are being disseminated. Okay. Oh, are they? Yes. Um, she changes yes. things. So you have a, she changes uh, does she have a tree list? Yes. We do have a tree list. Yes, you know, we we've sent it. Again, that, I'm going to email can, it to everybody. Actually, almost, if we're going to do the one that you're concerned about, why don't we ask slide to the site plan? And it could be an, uh, an appendix at the back. And refer to it That's a in great the idea. ad, so all developers could see what trees should be planted. Is Dan part of so the I, I'm sorry, did I say the same thing? It's fine. Yes, no, totally. Yeah, it's it's like not here, and you guys said that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I'm sorry, I was in the ladies' room. <laughs> That's a it's great a idea. idea. Okay. I'm happy good. To I apologize for repeating no, that. I, I, I left the room. And that was my fault. So I'm a genius choice. So, sure. I mean, that's so I know we gave this there. to the planning board the list, but who knows what they did? Okay. So, yeah, as an appendix. Appendix to the site plan review. Perfect. So that way the developer gets okay. to see no right. trees he has to plant. Wait, which I'm not going to go by evergreens. Does he say evergreens don't work there? Board. Well, I think yeah, evergreens are probably on there. The, the, no, the, the list had a lot of trees. That's right, yeah. That's we that's were trying to go for native. I believe that list had a few trees that weren't native. Yeah, but it's always an issue. It, it, it's not. 
on the older list we do. I don't think on the new list. In the English? design standard, it says that there's like a preference to natives, but um, when they're talking about the trees. Mm -hmm. May I add something to that? Yeah, it's trees. Yeah. Um, is it possible to put on the list that would go to the developers the to, um, yeah. um, uh, that... Uh, along with the... the law. That, it not, that you oh, not recommend or okay, that so you, you. Um, yeah. discourage whatever the verbiage is you want it as any kind of... Um, uh, cal repair yeah, yeah it's, it's on the list okay it is on yeah. the list okay on the list. do not do, do not, not do not plant do not plant them do not plant yeah. them see the the reason why the pines end up on things like that is because if you're trying to prevent a do a buffer for like when we're doing the solar yes right that when sense. all the trees leaves fell off the trees you didn't right. hide the solar yeah, exactly. so when you do a pine yeah that blocks that view yeah of something that you don't really want to see a pine tree does the best job. Well, it's alive. Yeah, but it, <laughs> yeah, right. I, you know, I mean, I, I have there's pines next to me. Pines very flourishing old. on the south end of Grand Island. I see them all over the place. And there's, yeah, there's yeah, pines back about. by our church that have been there for Down on all a zillion years. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm just thinking of the scrawny ones that they planted on Whitehaven. Oh, yeah, no, no. Like yeah. Three or four. I don't know. There, it seems to be like there's a difference between the old growth pines and anything you try to like plant it's a, it's, la in the last five years. Like, it's just going to die. It's, I don't it's know soil. what's going on. I feel like the answer is in the soil chemistry. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it's just not. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's some trees. But I think it's just getting wait, hotter, better, or pollution. Oh, better. Right. Okay. Um, are you guys ready for a motion? I am mm -hmm. going to make a motion. Okay. The, the CAB recommends that the following be added to the site plan checklist for developments trees. Please follow the landscape code 327 33 other tree. Other street improvements. B, trees shall be provided in all residential subdivisions of a type compatible with local conditions. Such trees shall be planted in the front yard setback area and spaced at intervals of not more than 50 feet. The size, type, and species of such trees shall uh, be approved by the board. Also, please attach the recommended tree list as an appendix to the site plan checklist for a reference for developers. Wow. It's a lot. Okay. Can I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Discussion. Discussion. So, this is one we're sending to the town board. This is the one we're going to send to the town board after this meeting today. That way, they have. This is the. This is the one that has the law that backs it up. There is another one that has a law, but we can discuss that one later. I think that's a longer discussion, but this one here, I think everybody's in agreement with. For the sake of discussion, do you want to add what number you want it added to, or do you want it to have its own? I don't block? know. So, um, yeah, that's a good question. It, it, you know, for me, it could, it could be its own thing, or it could be. I like it to stay. It's a law, so if it, 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 the law we're writing the law, so, so I would like the add, law to stick. What does it add? Yeah, yeah, because like having it as its own bullet point as trees, like really making it like a important a, a, a thing. Function. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I'm going to come across is if they're going to say it already says it. They're going to yeah. say it. I mean, doesn't it already does it say? Does the category the landscaping doesn't it kind of already say? It's it just it, we're just yeah. not, we're just asking. It says it. We're asking to enforce it and add the law. That, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get? It's, it's already in there, Dan. But even the stand uh, the design standards it. for non-residential, they got landscaping, and then they put the trees as a separate thing down further. Okay. I mean, what sake of discussion? I'll present how you guys want. Yeah, yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm kind of with you. What? What does the law actually say? Is it what Sue read us recently or? Oh, so it's what I just read. That's I read you the law. Oh, you read the law. I, and, and then I do think the law needs to be do you mind in the check. Do one more time? Trees shall be provided in all residential subdivisions of a type compatible with local conditions. Such trees shall be planted in the front yard setback area and spaced at intervals of not more than 50 feet. The size, type, and species of such trees shall be approved by the board. Approved by the town town board, but but the town board doesn't know trees, so that's why in the sentence after uh, that I put please attach yeah. the recommended tree list yep. as an appendix to the site plan checklist for a reference for developers. The town board's not going to you know 
Right. You know, mm -hmm. they're, you know. Sure. This is what I'm wondering where they're going to, where they're going to say it. Added. What number? Let's say tree. Number 19. What, can you read number 19 for us? Escaping plan. Yeah, I can read that one. The other one was number five. Um, landscape plan indicating location, type, and size of existing trees. That, yeah. Nobody's following yeah. that. No, that, and I think that's separate. Okay. It, just reading that first sentence, I feel like it's separate. Okay. Okay. That's fine with me. So that's okay. talking about the existing trees. It's almost like a site. She's assessment. talking about another law that does exist. Like they're supposed right. to submit a landscaping plan. Right. Right. And that's not this. This is just plant the trees in the front yard set back. Like oh, you're right. That's, that's something different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Two separate things. All right. So what's the um, motion again? Hmm? All right. So oh, you, oh, you don't have to. I haven't made, I haven't made any changes to it. Okay. Um, what do you as, think, Kristen? Do you still think it's too rushed? I'm not sure where it's going. I mean, I, I guess my thought is, I, I'm I'm hearing what's being said about not making it like too much that it's you know winds up just getting lost in discussions and da -da. but I don't I don't know I feel like there's a few things maybe that we could add as opposed to just one. I, I don't know. I, I'm willing to go along with whatever the rest of this group wants to do. I agree. Absolutely. And if there wasn't so many subdivisions on the docket right now, I would say let's kick the can another month. But like if there's one we can get in front of the board that is that uh, that the law 100 percent, you know, says, then they can do that while we work on the rest of our mm -hmm. checklist. If they have That's that, fair. and then yeah. they have the tree list, like maybe if that gets added to the back, so they have it whenever they're making their developments, you know, mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. um, and if you share the checklist with me, I'll make sure that I attach it in the email also that goes to the town board. So they'll have okay. both the motion sure. and the checklist. That's for you. What's that? What do you, what do you mean by share the chat? Our email to me. So do you have it? The tree list? The tree list. Yeah, yeah I, I emailed it to you. Okay, I perfect. I emailed it to you. All right. Let me add that that's going to be a tip. We we're requesting it be attached as an index. Okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Appendix. That's the last sentence. Please attach the recommended tree list as an appendix to the site plan okay. checklist for a reference for developers. Okay. If you want to, if you want to send that to Rhonda and tell her to make it part of my agenda, <laughs> okay. I'll do that. Never mind. Come to me. I'll do it. Are we adding this to? Sorry, just not to be dense, but are we adding this to the checklist, or what is? What are, yes. what are we adding? It, we're we're adding this. There should be a section that just says trees. Please follow the landscape code, and here's the law from the landscape code three twenty seven dash thirty three, and there's the law. Would no more to them we're, to. We're, Oh, I'm sorry. No, it would make sense for them to renumber it and put it right under 19. Mm -hmm. Make it 20. Do we have to say, no, we have to say make it 20? I'm just saying what would make yeah. sense. If they look at that and they say, where do you want to put this? Recommend. If they're willing to, to, to slide everything down, fine. But if they want to add it to the end, we'll add it to the end. We'll, we'll see what, what Ron wants to do with it when I talk to him. I don't, as long as it makes it on. So we're not going to do anything about Number five, you know what I mean? Yeah, where it says to just get it in this bit. I'd like to see that change oh, yeah. sometime. You know, right, right. Yeah. 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 That's yes. that's and then just grab a little thing here, and then we can go back mm -hmm. and right, right, large right. trees to but also X amount of inches at you breast height. The more you, the more you uh, implement must and have when it comes to trees. That if before the developer comes and grabs a package to fill out a click here, click who will clear cut. That's what will happen if you make the make everything difficult. Say I own a piece of property, I'm a developer. Before I even pick this packet up, I, and I find I, before I pick it up and I read it, I go, Oh, you're cut. I have to get permission not to cut these trees down. Well, before I fill this out, I'm cutting all my trees down. Yeah. So you you what you do here can be actually counterproductive for what you want. So you, so you word it. This is after they Clear yeah. Cut. Yeah. But the, this law I'm is like say what's put a tree back we're in the production. That the case. Yeah. We, yeah. We've, seen, uh, we've seen that. Already. We're assuming we've we're added gone through. We're talking about how many trees have added to site. You yeah. said watch how far you. We've yeah, been through the yellow ones. Land doesn't want to deal with putting yellow ribbons on trees that have to be saved after he puts his permit in. Yeah. We'll cut them down before he puts his permit. Right. 
So mm. you okay. the card before the horse you get in trouble. All right. So I have I have not made any changes. Okay. The original, right? Would you like me to reread it or would you like to vote? You can vote. So all right. Me. Uh all in favor of sending this to the town board? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion is carried. Um, I will, you have this, it's the second page of the document. I'm gonna copy and paste this and send this to the town board with the, the board. And then the rest of our checklist are our wishes. Our wishes. And um, there is there, there, that site, you're right about the site plan that is in the law. And you know, there should be a, you know, something, you know, a site plan submission, but uh, we can, we can tackle that. No, we do. Uh, Add to our list that we've, you've already started. Yeah. Still. So uh, the list is a is a it's a living document. So I shared it with everybody, so you can take a look at it. Um, you can edit it. Yeah, I can always go back to the you know previous versions. The second page is the motion that was just that. Well, for now, do you not it's not work on. I think that um, aside for a little while. we can work on the needs some other time. And okay. depending on like what our next month is, I don't know what's on the docket coming next month. So okay. um, there, uh, the the Nature Alliance has something else coming up in May. Yeah, you have a native plant native sale oh, yeah. Yeah. on May tenth. May tenth, native plant sale. Where's do you wanna do you know the details of Nike that? Nike base, Nike base, five to six thirty. Nike base, five to six thirty. I think we've got three or four vendors. There'll be native plants, and there'll be a couple of brief presentations on the importance of native plants. And we had really good turnout last time, so mm -hmm. good time to plant early. And in mm -hmm. June, we have uh, purple martin programs. Mm -hmm. Offered more than once, I think three times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be cool. That's nice. And then there's going to be the wildlife kayak tours. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the foraging yeah. walk last night was really wonderful. We foraging. Yeah, we went foraging yeah. in scenic woods. <laughs> Brought a few things home to eat. Find any more else? <laughs> what did you buy? No, we it's didn't really find any more else. It's really. Uh, ramps and wild garlic, violets. Although we. You Dude. want wild garlic? You can come and forage in my front yard. <laughs> <laughs> this other sticky thing, I forget the name. Cleavers. Of. Nettle? Yes, mm -hmm. cleavers. Oh, nettle, I picked once off. Mm -hmm. what, what did you call it? A cleaver is yeah. that you can stick to your shirt. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. It was. She was excellent. She told you. She shared what to watch out for, what to be careful with, what mushrooms are safe. We didn't find very many mushrooms, but. If one was deadly, actually. Yes. Mm. Anyway. No, either way. Mm -hmm. She's she's wonderful, and we've had her now twice. So if Who she might she might do another one in the fall. Ellen Owens, she works at the Castellani Art Museum. Mm. That was pretty cool. Look at me. Look, take them off. You forget which one is a no, poison. She, <laughs> no, but she, she gives you a lot of confidence because she said there's really not that many poisonous ones. And she triple checks every single one, the different sources. <laughs> Got to look at the it's gills. So the like gills are important. <laughs> yeah. That'd be my response, but yeah. She... Uh, all right. So um, other project updates. Uh, anything uh, town board with, um, we talked about golf you already. So uh, the ransom project. Um, last meeting, uh, I made a motion to, to uh, approve the rezoning, and it got... Which one are we talking about? No, I'm sorry. I, I made a motion to, to not approve the rezoning simply because of the density, and uh, it didn't it didn't go anywhere. It so, didn't go a second. Uh, no, so we we kind of tabled it and for more discussion. Um, I, you know, I, I've told the developer I was where I was all the time, and they made the mistake of kind of letting it come up on the agenda. I just said, well, I may just take the mm -hmm. opportunity to say no. It's, it, I'm kind of new. It, doesn't, it didn't work out for me. But again, I don't mind. The guy's a nice guy. He's a super nice guy. And it seems to me that he's, he's made promises from previous town boards for that piece of property. And and and, and, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna new, so I'm, I don't know. I wasn't part of those promises, so uh, I feel bad. And you know, I got to meet with him. He wants me to meet with him because he wants to explain why we are where we are. So 
it's it's kind of tabled for now, Ransom and Stoney. Um, uh, any movement on Long Road? Uh, we should have a motion to uh, uh, the town board meeting on the 6th of it. Uh, I think it's the 6th to uh, approve the M1 law that, uh, that restricts not warehouses, it's just the size of buildings um, and then one district. So okay. um, I think it's 150,000 square feet. I have to, the law has been just like all these plans. We've seen so many, I have to remember what we wrote and have to read it before it make, but it's the one we sent to the county oh, and uh, we have to get a, like a super majority vote up. What is this? What is it? Four. Oh. There's only four of us. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what was that? It's on the next board. I think it's, I don't want to say the sixth, but I want to make sure it's is that is a month a week from this Monday the sixth. Before I first yeah. next Wednesday. I got it right. Okay. <laughs> um, it's at the regular town board meeting. Uh, um. I had forwarded Jeff an email that I got from Cred for GI where I think it was the DEC was approaching landowners along the berm that's proposed something about trading something for Ducks Unlimited. Do you remember that? So yeah, I so I I vaguely remember something like this happened before. They invite all of the adjacent landowners to basically like it, it's a forum but it ends up being... yesterday or the day before yesterday yeah. at the visitor center yeah um and you know i i'm of the mind like why not why not the whole community right like you know this is was it about creeks or what no it was about um trading oh, right trading yeah trading and to build you know to allow them to give another piece of property like pond versus what they have there now, to maybe not to allow it. Credits. Yeah. Yeah. Credits. I don't understand, but that's okay. So <laughs> if they develop this land, then they're going to pay Ducks Unlimited to do some, you know, renovating of the land. I think that uh, happened with Fuchillo. It did. Yeah, but like, it didn't. <laughs> it did, but it didn't. You're right. <laughs> Is this the one that Kristen Savard is involved in? That's Seems a, like that would be an island-wide issue as opposed to just landowners. It's impacting the environment. It's a long road in development, and they invited the some of the West River homeowners. Oh, they do. Oh. So if you remember where it's going, mm -hmm. there's there's like an empty lot. There's two lots, and it's that empty lot that kind of borders everything. And I don't know, I don't know. Um, I didn't go to the uh, the proposal, but like you know, they wanted the adjacent homeowners to weigh in. You know, and which I understand too. Um, it's just that this is a pretty tight community too. We'd all like to, we'd all like for the DEC to hear our voices also. It's important that that they understand, you know, what the what the culture of the island is. You know. Did you attend that meeting? No, I. It's my mother's eighty fifth birthday, so no, I, I had to prioritize. Kathy, <laughs> <laughs> see what the other ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think Ducks Unlimited did a bunch with the buckle. Um, you remember? Uh, so, uh, previous board member who since passed away did. Um, there was some. It was Ron. It Ron. was Ron, right? And he did. There was some some property somewhere where Ducks Unlimited did come in and do something, and um, I remember him telling me about. I, th I think there was a sign at the Buckhorn Marsh that says something about Duck Unlimited. There's, there's a sign by the bike. I have to go back and look. I have a couple of things, if but I, not if you're not done with the town business. Um, oh, wait, is this the new? Uh, is this news or is this? Yeah, it can be news. Okay. Right. All right. So let, just a couple of things. So I don't think anything's happening with um, South Point and Rivertown. Have you heard anything? Any um, progress, new development? I think we're getting closer. I, I, I'm a fan of it. So uh, I think we're getting closer to. There's just a few little things that are cross some T's and dot some I's. And, and Gun Creek is. You're uh, talking about Rivertown, not South Point, right? No, Rivertown. Rivertown. Yeah, South Point has, they, they chopped some stuff down and, yeah. like, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> uh, Gun Creek is supposed to be getting closer to connecting the, <laughs> the road, but uh, that 
this either. Mm -hmm. um, the, and then the last thing I like, I got uh, in in the mailbox um, the Aldi layout, mm -hmm. uh, what they're doing. Here's actually the Aldi layout. Okay. Oh, that's a topic. I probably shouldn't put them out for you guys. So, well, 19,631 square foot. Oh, this all. Oh, okay. I see. There's some clearance. Got a pretty good plan scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, are these getting put up on the website at all? These plans as they come in? Uh, well, yes, yeah, they're coming up for a public hearing on the sixth. So I, I would okay. have all the is a selection under new developments. Okay, uh, it's at the very bottom. It's not alphabetical order. It's all the puts together public hearing. Let's tell what public hearing. All right. So that's. That's it for new development. You guys can take a look at those. Yeah. 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 Because nobody can tell me to do it. So maybe it's a perennial mass. Maybe it's this. It's <laughs> yeah. for people. Okay, right. bike just for they put, uh, if you go down to the high school, it's considered a bike trail. Maybe it's a if you go this thing here. Yeah. Grand Allen Boulevard is like yeah. about the same way. Once blacktop, once concrete. Yep. Yeah. Sidewalk is considered for pedestrians. Okay. Well, we widen that we had this uh, walk widened for the purpose of accommodating that, that sidewalk was terrible and what they white they fixed those corners mm. and it's significantly better yeah I just said, no. significantly better uh, but th there has been conversations about trying to so that's where it sounds just like just in that just in that yeah there mm. they can mm -hmm. and it's and this isn't so it isn't I'd like to you should try to make sure. Oh, this is stone. Okay. Yeah, it's stone. Okay. Okay. So here, so we're there. That's right. The night make sure it's just on your agenda for every month. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Next month, yeah. everybody's got to go. Uh, I used to live down here, and when I'd come up, here, yeah, but yeah, I won't edit that. Yeah, the, the, this at least I already did come on. Was so come on for the three. This was for uh, come on. Yeah, we started a building. Maybe that's why they'll have. All right, so while everybody has the all the development, like I mean, you guys can look that over. And, you know, I mean, there's much for us to talk about there, but you know, it's just curiosity. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're on to news, so okay. you can go ahead, Diane. Um, the RFP. I asked you if you would look into it. Uh, is who knows where it is? Is it with the lawyers? Um, I called Peter and um, he had a, a death in the family. So um, okay. he was, I, I, I gave him, I, I wasn't important at that point yeah, to no, me. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay. But I did, um, who else I talked to? I talked to the grant writer as well. Yes. Um, to find out if there's any kind of grants for this kind of stuff and what would be the benefit of doing it, you know, mm -hmm. because there has to be a benefit in order, you know, this will this help us mm -hmm. to, to achieve other grants and other mm -hmm. things that we're looking for. He, he assured me it would actually help in some ways, uh, especially with like, believe it or not, our drainage problems mm -hmm. and, and the, the rivers, the, Natural waterways are backed up. So mm -hmm. I met with them today at two or one o'clock here. Nathan in this room. or Bernie? Nathan or... and Bernie. Both. And Bernie both. Okay. Uh, th there's a couple other things I want to work with them on too. Mm -hmm. But um, so the short conversation I had with the attorney was he thought he made the changes and sent it back to you. Mm -hmm. The question is okay. <laughs> okay, did you, did, did, the attorney send you back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I'll deal with that 
when, okay. when it's an appropriate time to get a hold of Peter. Sure. Um, he thought he'd made a few changes and sent it back to you or sent it to us. I don't know who he sent it to, but it, you're okay. right. But but you have to honcho stuff like this because everyone thinks someone else is doing something. So it was a good thing you contacted me. Okay. Are you talking about the resources RFP? Mm -hmm. The index? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, they are, yeah. She had thought, I, I think Peter, uh, Pete did give it to Peter because Peter said he reviewed it. Oh, okay. That's good. But somewhere there's a disconnect where it went back right. to. Right. Okay. So um, again, and that's going to come to a, it looks like it's going to, you're going to have to have support to fund that because there is not a grant to fund the initial part of it. Mm -hmm. But once it was started, there could be a, re, you know, a reimbursement type of a setup. Because once you, once we see, have a good plan and we're and there's right. grants that can fund it. I happened to talk to Bernie myself okay. and Nathan yesterday. Okay. Um, and the same, um, they didn't think they could help at all with the smaller grant right. for the natural resource inventory. And and Nathan explained to me that they they don't. They've not done uh, grant requests like this for like planning for consultant. Um, so they're not aware of, this is what I gathered from what they said. It's just, it's not really something they've had experience with. I did ask about the CFA because Jim Sharp had suggested maybe we could get a grant through them. So Nathan explained to me why that's probably not a possibility. Because they deal with more like construction grants and more physical concrete things. So, so they'll keep their eyes and ears open. But right now, they, the one thing that Nathan found while he was talking to me was he said, why don't you know, maybe you should apply for the Greenway and get money through the Ecological Standing Committee. And that is a process that we hadn't considered at all. But I thought I'd talk to Michelle about what she's seen come in to, um, to the Greenway along that line and if there have been many proposals. So what I'm feeling right now is um, my own personal feeling is I wish we could just hire Robin who's already given us an estimate given us a you know she's been so helpful to just do the NRI and she's but I don't I don't know the pro that's not going through the normal protocol except no. that I did contact three uh, three um firms that will do a natural resource inventory. So it could still be competitive if we could get it out there, but we don't have a guaranteed funding for it. But I did gather, and maybe I'm wrong, that the town, like when Pete said, oh, is that all it is? Do you remember that comment? <laughs> and Tom said, oh. I will not confirm. No, that no, 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 okay. <laughs> Tom said, oh, we can take care of that. Yeah, I remember that. So it sounds like, yeah, I don't know. And, and it would be we're, wonderful we're tasked if... to do this in New York state law. We're tasked to do this in yeah. our code. So how can it? And if we work, if we could get the NRI going, then we can look broader and wider for something that would maybe be more like a $50,000 grant for the actual open space plan. The value just, just. Um, That's exactly what he told me too. Is we may have to pay for the initial, and then the bigger money will come for the bigger point, the bigger. Right, rate. right, yeah. Um, what about the money that Paul talked about when developers have to donate a thousand dollars a lot. How about we tap into that? It's for recreation. If you want to talk to town to divert it to right. conservation, conservation. Yeah, you exactly. can. You can yeah. request anything. <laughs> plus, plus they have that grant for the open space too that they've been sitting. That they're on. working on right now. The one that went for, the oh, yeah, well, I read that. So <laughs> I hate to tell you that that wasn't, it's, uh, it, it was, was through the county. It was county. Yeah. Money. And it was, there is some, I, I got a copy of it and I read it. And, um, and I actually said, if the, the group I'm working with, Cab thinks she stole their money, tell them why you didn't. If it's still being recorded. 
<laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, it's, it's fine. I don't care. I, I hold my words. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I asked uh, one of the gentlemen that is involved, and he said, nope. And he handed me the plane. He goes, it was always for recreation and parks. And I said, okay. And, yeah. uh, I I know I, there's so, there's a different yeah. there's a different view. Yeah. It's, it's because of the verbiage of what you guys want. But it's it's all about the verbiage of mm -hmm. what you guys want mm -hmm. and what they did. It has the last sentence is the same. <laughs> and I, I understand that you guys thought it was yours, and yeah. they think it's theirs right. for a different use. So I think rather than argue over, let's just move forward and get what we need. Sure. Yeah. And one thing I wanted, because you asked me at our last meeting what the value of doing an open space plan was. I was thinking about that a lot. Because we're getting all these, this influx of, de of developers, want, and we have wonderful space and land here. If we come up with an open space plan that protects maybe our most valuable plots of land, maybe only four or five of them, then we've we've guaranteed for our community that there's going to be these ecological habitats. And it's it's the it's the long look ahead. Like we we decided that South where South Point is, you know, that was that was rated really high on our index. But of course, it had already been purchased years ago. But like we lost that because we didn't have an open space plan. Yeah. So I just see it as a real value for the community going forward. An attraction to people who might want to live here or have business here. Anyway, I just no, I, I get it. I don't. I don't think I answered you very well last time. So. No, I, I what what I'm I, again. I'm I trying not to cast lights here, but my problem. My thing is, are you? When you do an open space plan, the next step is, it seems like you're going to be saying of this open space plan, now we need a lot of money to buy real estate. Is that, is that what we're doing? Not necessarily. How, well, how are you going to get the open space from the people that own it? A lot of it we hope to do through conservation easements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Indeed restrictions. There are, there's several, um, in fact, at a land conservancy mm -hmm. bought a couple, like they yeah. bought the BLS the, property right by, the, right by the cemetery. In that, yeah, well, uh, I don't know. No, the BLS property is different, one. but the one behind the it's on Love Road, right? Yeah, There's one behind uh, Thermal the White Havens, that's oh. a big one. Gallic oh, behind what? It, it, it's it's, 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 it's across the street, I think. It's it's the uh, Gallon Glee that to. The Nike, oh, okay. right? So, so they did that one, and then they they did the BOS okay. fairly recently. And so, that's so there is there is ways of getting it. But one of the things when Diane and I and a couple of us around that committee looked, one of the what other towns have done is they put in a fee for was it buying or selling? They've created like the parks did, so a selling fee x amount of dollars goes into this fund to purchase or do nature type things open space so we we saw that in several of the uh, different communities have come up with ways of doing raising money here we've raised money for parks but but consistently for not, a long not for us yeah. right yeah. and a lot of other people are funded but we have no funding. So we're a group who has zero funding and no no way of getting any funding. In, in one decade, we've only had a few thousand dollars to do the uh, inventory in a decade, a few thousand dollars. You know, occasionally we send out mailers about septic tanks. There are a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, but like we need a line. like. To do our job properly and be efficient and be, uh, you know, to cover the things that were required by the state law for the town board, like we have to get to this point. Like this is this is a. It's important to us. It is, <laughs> to it's important to yeah, it's important to the whole community. Yeah. So one uh, of the things, Dan, that came out of these other plans is you need to have some kind of a revenue line, way of raising revenue to do things like here we want to do the first step and we don't have a penny. 
and we don't know if the board will give us a penny and we can't find a grant. So New York State says, do it. We say, okay, and town says yes or no. Town says no, then we go nowhere. So we, we support... don't have any money to just go out and say we're going to, mm -hmm. over the course of time, we're going to take that $10,000 that we've accumulated over two or three or four years and we're going to... Again, I think we can put more emphasis on conservation easements, I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that's that's the way we have to start. Anyway. And if it's in the best interest of the, of the community, ultimately, like you're saying, you know, are you getting money to buy this land? Well... The money to buy vacant land is much different than the money to buy developed land. So mm -hmm. let's not think it's like, uh, you know, we're buying, you know, the Eiffel Tower or anything like that. It's you're buying lots. And, and a lot of it is not Empty very lots. developable because there's swamps and, and you know, marshes and, and yeah. wetlands, right, that you can't really build on very easily anyhow. So for someone to create an easement and give it to us because they can't develop it anyhow. Yeah, we can find uh, if I, Yeah, if I own land that was not developed, on, I, 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 you know, mm -hmm. no problem, there you go. Yeah, I can't build on it anyway. But New York State is engaging in an open space plan now, and there's going to be hearings this summer. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, commissioners across the state. So Waterkeeper, Western New York Land Conservancy, a number of people from our area are involved in that because the long-term goal of New York State is to conserve 30% of our land with a goal of creating corridors. So Grand Island is going to be part of that. You know, so it's conceivable that at some point down the road, if we have an open space plan, the state would provide funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is it's, conceivable. Just like if we had a tree ordinance, we could get money to preserve trees. And I, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I think vacant land doesn't mean that it doesn't have value. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible resource. It is, especially and if it's a And I think we need to move away from using the term vacant because that has sort mm -hmm. of a negative connotation <laughs> you know we're talking about protecting the resources in our community so that when people think of grand island they they don't think of just big apartment complexes and overdevelopment they think of these beautiful green spaces all right and so speaking yeah. of we do have a little bit of a mini update on the, the nine acres of the diocesan land mm -hmm. off of east river oh yeah how did you find out about that i was like searching I, and searching I, no i read the whatever channel seven okay article and it okay. listed the properties and i happened to see okay. vacant land grand island i'm like what so i looked up the sbl and yeah investigated a little bit the but town. the okay. town is pursuing yeah. the purchase of the property oh, cool well yeah we're pers what i what i did is i brought it to p because you guys mm -hmm. asked me to yeah and i don't know if you watched the cab meeting or what but he was already on it <laughs> Oh, well. I see. I did said, stop by and oh, did you? with Rhonda okay, about well, the SBL. Yeah. So he said um, he said he found out that the town has adjacent property to it that would be that would make it over ten acres. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's so one that, of the things that would make it higher on our okay. list. So yeah. Where is it? We were here? talking. I think okay. and I and I don't yeah, know. I don't want to speak for Pete. So yeah. I, I yeah thought because I'm a conservative. In other words, being cheap, um, if, I think we should first send a letter to the diocese and say, "Hey, you want it's this is a a non buildable uh, wetlands. Would you like to donate this to the town for our concert for our land conservancy?" Mm -hmm. And if they say no, but we'll sell it to you for this, at least we started with free. Mm -hmm. Start with free and see what yeah. see what we can do. I agree. So I think that I think that be. I think that Pete and I were in a kind of an agreement, and that's a good way to approach it. But I don't want to speak for Pete. Pete mm -hmm. can speak for himself on that one. I think I think that that's the first step is to ask. Them. Um, I mean, yeah. what, why it? would the diocese want to keep a piece Where of land that's useless to them? Except for Sandy Beach. Yeah. Oh, except near Sandy Beach. I had sent it out after the last meeting. The, um, Where's what? The land? Yeah. The land, yeah. It's right across the street from that big old mansion, the biggest house on the island. Uh, okay. it's the, the, the driveway is almost Stony right across Stony the street. Beach. Beach. You know where the horse stables are? Yeah. It's kind of in the general area, right? Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. That's fantastic. It's like, I'm glad you guys are pursuing it because that would be. He, I was surprised, Pete. Uh, you, uh, now I know when you talked to me, he goes, I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay. Um, well, last thing, and then past nine o'clock. All right, so um, you guys said Marjorie Gallagher, and I did see that um, the Western New York Hiking Challenge, yeah. which is a big 
thing now. Yeah, they they, included they it. give a list of trails and these people go to these trails and they check them off one by one. They got to take pictures of themselves and put it on social media. And mm -hmm. if they do them all, they get a patch like or something like that. I've done it for like the last five years. And so Gallagly landed on that list and that's going to be a that's going to be a tourist draw. Like, so, yeah. you know, I, uh, you know, the town board should be aware of that. Like, it, it'd be interesting if there was a way we, we could, you know, somehow showcase them or get them downtown to spend a little money on the island while they're, while we're here. Um, but like, you know, see what, uh, see everything Grand Island has to offer. So, you know, something to be. This is like a little bit separate, but that's a really big function of what Gina has been like talking about and trying to like drive to is just to make the resources that are available the ecotourism to become more of a like a, a larger draw mm -hmm. for Grand Island because there are so many different things to do and to really make it more of like a destination type of place. So and yeah. for EDEB, um, for the economic development, this is right. Um, um, thank you for bringing this up about the hiking challenge because I will definitely mention it at the next EDEB meeting too. Um, we've got a few new members on that board that have breathed some uh, very welcome new life into the board and um, this fits right in with our ecotourism as well so there's also a birdathon going on between now and june <laughs> across western new york and audubon is sponsoring or has something to do with it if you're interested thank you yeah. 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 These are all the kind of things that we it's over here uses want to capitalize on. Several times a year, probably four or five times a year, they they launch from Grand a, a whole kayak, Monday night kayakers or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's awesome to hear all this stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We got to get the island ship shape and get the right businesses in the right places, and That's right. you know, um, hopefully more trails wind up on on that list I, I you know i did west river it's just so long like it would be great if you were to do like you know how they have like the walkathons and raise money like are you like certain trips yeah being well, amazing they did ride for roswell during covid they created mm -hmm. the grand right. island loop and i did that but they moved it after covid they moved it back to ub yeah so and and they now have a river they now have a canadian route that goes over the peace bridge and it crosses at the Rainbow Bridge, but it doesn't come across the island. It goes around the island. Um, so it would have been great if they... Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, it is 9.10. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Can second? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Meeting is over at 9.11 p.m. Peggy, did you...